can follow us in uh, China. The QR code from the PPT. Please do it. Um, I'm here today on behalf of Graphi. My name is Michel Gilman, and uh, I'm looking after our product marketing. And uh, I was asked today to present and share with you a number of case studies representing what's happening today with industrial. That was my case. I'm proving today. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, who came by a train, Gautier, anyone, Gautier today, and uh, DJ Mitchell as well, thank you. So all these companies have something in common, they all use industrial IoT today to deliver uh, what we care about, be it safety, be it affordability, punctuality. So the point in today is to, to explain a bit more what's happening with some of these companies, how they use industrial IoT to deliver what we care about. And uh, I think today we have a number of uh, IoT manufacturers, uh, service providers, solution providers, and uh, it's also about what can we learn collectively today and uh, how are we going to move forward. So let's start with aviation. And aviation, uh, if you look at the industry, one of the most critical aspects of aviation is keeping the, the plane uh, ready to fly, it's called maintenance, MRO, the maintenance repair overall. And I've selected uh, three case studies to show you a bit more what's happening uh, with these companies. First example here, uh, if you look at the plane, it's an incredibly complex beast. Um, uh, Boeing Hotel is telling us they actually handle 4 million uh, different pieces, parts for all their planes. And they source from about 20,000 suppliers. So it's extremely complex uh, when it comes to uh, managing this uh, piece of technology. So what does that mean for an airline, a typical airline? And I've got the example here of Citroen Airlines, which we've been working with. So Citroen Airlines, typical airlines, they have 10,000 employees, about 100 aircraft, uh, five hubs here in mainland China. And, uh, you know, for them, uh, all their aircraft uh, require uh, an inventory of 60,000 parts, 60,000 consumables that they need to manage day in, day out, which is increasingly costly and also complex if you look at inventory, if you look at uh, procurement as well. So the challenge for them was how do we uh, make that a bit easier? So what if, uh, instead of doing everything manually, we could actually have each and every part uh, tagged uh, with labels, uh, and also being automatically accounted for, be it in an inventory, be it throughout the facility. Uh, what if the facilities could be equipped with those readers to automatically capture the data and uh, uh, connect into uh, uh, our SAP uh, ERP system, right? So getting the information in real time in their ERP, that's what they achieved uh, with our account. So today, Citroen Airlines is a good example of using IoT to actually drive your operations. Aviation obviously is also about safety, and uh, the, the same one, Boeing, uh, made an estimate that said safety costs 4 billion US dollars per year to the industry. Uh, it's mostly what they call the FODs, Foreign Object Debris, which is basically leaving something behind in the plane, the engine, or elsewhere. That's a risk, and that has an, has an impact, of course, on, on airlines. So here comes uh, Heco. Heco, these guys are the world leader today in aircraft in our own. So just next door in, in Hong Kong, and also in Xiamen in the US. And uh, they've been uh, asking us, how can we actually manage better uh, our MRO workshops, where we have the staff looking after the engines on behalf of the airlines. And obviously, for them, the critical part is nothing needs to be left behind. Everything needs to be accounted for. So, what we worked with them was what if you know, each and every tool that your team is using is actually featuring uh, a tag that can be then read remotely and connected with your, with your system. That means now, a headquarter in Hong Kong, they can manage their inventory. 85% faster, which of course is a, is a, a massive improvement compared with a manual counting. 
More importantly, the battery is 100% accurate, and you do want 100% accuracy when you fly. So, Echo today is showing the way for a number of, uh, of uh, companies in aviation. How do you actually move forward your operation? How do you make things more uh, efficient, but also how do you hardwire uh, compliance and safety in your, in your very process? I've got one more example here, uh, which I think is, is also very telling, considering the growth of the uh, aviation industry. Every day, you have five new planes entering service anywhere in the world. And actually, five new planes, most of them are, are here in China and, and Asia as well. So the market is growing very fast, and a number of companies have seen the potential here. One of them is uh, Stanley Fackel. Stanley Hacker is uh, the largest manufacturer in the world of tools and are also the largest suppliers to the aviation industry of all the tools required to look after, after planes. So what they've been doing uh, recently is they've been working with us to actually build in IoT into the tools they offer to their clients. Their thinking was the market is growing fast, what's important to, uh, to airlines, to MR operators, is safety, is compliance, it's also productivity. It's also the ability to turn around an aircraft faster. How do you do that, right? So their idea was what if our tools could come with IoT capacity, make them IoT native in a way? What if those tools could also come with toolboxes? and smart trees that actually embed RFID readers so that the tools can be automatically accounted for. That means it's easier for the team, it's uh, an automatic in terms of compliance and delivers directly benefits to the airline. So I think Stanley Falcon today, by embedding uh, IoT, is really showing the way forward. The value chain is moving up from initially projects using IoT for existing assets, moving up value chain to high value item, but also critical uh, processes in the industry. And now we see the IoT technology directly being built in some of the products to make them smarter, smarter for uh, the user of this product. So these three examples uh, cover uh, aviation, but what about the healthcare? Uh, we are also extremely active in healthcare, and we see a similar pattern. The value chain moving up, starting with project, low-hanging foods, consumables typically, moving on to critical uh, process, and eventually reaching uh, what we would call a built-in approach, making uh, products uh, IoT native. So here I've selected three more case studies for you today to share. The first one here is a, is a manufacturer of stents. Stents is used in surgery, for heart surgery. And these guys, they manufacture about 500,000 of those stents every year. So they've been talking with us saying, hey, our clients, the hospital, require us now not only to provide a stent, but also to make sure the stent is traceable, right? The hospital needs to comply with a number of regulations, uh, including uh, FDA, UTI in the US, and similar regulation in China now and in Europe. Whereby the manufacturer, the hospital, need to be able to say this uh, stand has been used by this medical team with these patients. So how do you do that, right? Uh, there is an added uh, complexity here. It's healthcare, and it's obviously it's all about safety for the patient. So we need to uh, sterilize those stands, and they sterilize the stands using gamma X-ray, which, among other, is not IoT friendly at all. A lot of electronic devices actually don't withstand gamma X-ray. So we work with this manufacturer to go back to the drawing board and to, to look into our portfolio of technology to understand what could actually work here. So what we came up with was some, some very basic RFID tag actually that have the capacity to withstand gamma X-ray. And these uh, the tags are now uh, uh, fixed onto the stands, onto the packaging, and take uh, the stands from the manufacturer down to the patient being sprayed step by step. And again, that's, that's a key feature today that is required by the market. 
in healthcare and a great example of uh, IoT for consumer goods. Healthcare is also about um, uh, pocket of care. Uh, <clears throat> we've been consulting now for, for some time with a leading uh, US uh, hospital, which is a US uh, teaching hospital, one of, one of the top ten in the market. And uh, they've been asking us how can we increase operation efficiency uh, in surgery, in the OR, right? Uh, they have about 90 different operating rooms that uh, perform about 75,000 procedures a year. It's, it's a very big hospital, a very active one. And for them the challenge was uh, whatever the medical team is doing that is not directly for the patient has a cost. And uh, we estimated together with them the cost, in this case, at 20 million US dollars. That's what it costs them in surgery today to actually perform a number of processes that needs to be manual. And the example here you see on the screen is, is a, a, a real life example where the medical team needs to count each and every instrument in surgery before the procedure and they need to count again after the procedure. That's a very basic, essential uh, safety measure to make sure that nothing is left behind. So the way they do it, you can see there are two people standing, two nurses, uh, they count one by one, all the sponges, all the instruments, all the devices, trays, etc. It takes an average 10 to 20 minutes before, 20, 10 to 20 minutes after, it costs time and money. Not to mention that it's a, it's a manual process, meaning there are human errors. And human errors, of course, see in, in surgery really have an impact. So, so the hospital was, that, was telling us, what if, instead of you know, doing everything by hand, we could have this done automatically in the background, right? What if each and every instrument could actually feature an tag or a label that would make it IoT connected? Same for the spongy, same for the trace, same for, for everything, basically, in the OR. And what if the OR could be fitted with those readers that could capture what's coming in, what's coming on, uh, out and eventually what stays behind, right? So we work on that with them to actually enable that, to make sure that this hospital has an alternative to manual account. The point today is information now is directly flowing into their hospital information system, making it safer for patients and more efficient for the hospital. One more example, endoscopes management. Endoscopes are these big equipment you see now in hospitals are extremely popular for a good reason to are safer for patients. Uh, the product of hospitals that are quite expensive to buy and quite complex also to operate, which means it's a challenge in some cases. And we, we've been talking now with a number of endoscope management and endoscope manufacturers uh, to work together on some uh, solution to make the endoscope smarter. So what we're working uh, on with them is to actually embed IoT chips directly into the endoscopes. That means the manufacturer can sell an endoscope to the hospital, but also provide them with a solution to effectively manage their equipment. So here we are with those examples in aviation and healthcare. And I don't want, of course, to limit industrial uh, IoT to these two sectors. We also have a number of references in manufacturing, usually focus more on automation, also with logistics. Logistics is a strong focus at the moment on e-commerce, where uh, they need to accelerate delivery, accelerate the sorting and, and automation in uh, the fulfillment centers. But I think for today, we already have a number of takeaways I'd like to share with you. The first one is uh, in terms of technology mix. Technology mix means the ability for uh, everyone in the industry to actually provide uh, the right technology for the right project. Uh, we have a very strong RFID background, but we see our clients, they don't really care about the technology. They care about the technology every day as a consumer and also as a, as a company, be it 5G, be it BLE, be it Wi-Fi, you name it. So I think the point today for us, what we see happening is that it's more important for, for uh, to be able to provide a portfolio of technologies mature enough to match the business requirements. And it's not just one, we, we see a number of technologies that can supplement each other to actually deliver what clients are looking for. 
The second important takeaway today is to look also at how can we simplify. Simplify remote, for instance, but also simplify solutions for clients. That's an example of an MRO workshop, right? It's extremely complex, and the last thing our clients want is actually for us to change anything. They are telling us their value agile projects. They want also solutions that can deliver quickly, very quickly results. Well, we realize that the best way of doing that is actually to simplify our solution, right? To give you an example, uh, we could ask the clients to say, okay, you need to buy a new end user terminal, right? Could be a tablet, could be something. Or what we did was actually providing our customer with an app that their staff can then access download on their phone in a kind of bring your own device approach. Again, we make the solution agile to make sure that clients have less friction for deployment and minimize change, which is the best way to achieve a result at the end of the day. Last but not least, the third takeaway today is actually how, uh, how to make it vertically integrated. Vertically integrated means that each and every time we work with a client, being healthcare and MRO, there's a lot of information to take on, right? All these clients have very specific business processes, have very specific requirements. Likewise, their team have a lot of accumulated expertise, so our challenge is actually to be able to capture all of these and turn this expertise into a solution that fits uh, typically what the client wants. That's what we call a vertically integrated approach, where we move away from specific uh, technical requirements such as read rent and focus more on the user experience. User experience means we want to make it easier for the end user to use the solution, to make uh, IoT, industrial IoT part of their process. So the bottom line is here. I think uh, today we have a mix of IoT manufacturers, service providers, solution providers. Uh, I think we all have the same challenge. No one can, can do it alone, right? Uh, there's a, a need for specific technology, specific cards, labels. We've seen it in detail, but the same in industry. Uh, we also need software, we need more hardware. So, at least what all requires for our clients to connect them with their physical assets, connect them with their enterprise resources, their ERP, for instance. Likewise, they have staff, people, that, need, that want to have information on the floor to be able to, get to work on it. Not to mention business processes. They've been uh, trained to uh, implement these processes. They want us to augment them, to make them smarter. So take this today as a, as a call for collaboration. And uh, we look forward to having this conversation, conversation with you all. Uh, have a look uh, at who we are in details with the QR code. And uh, let's make industrial IoT happen for